Was he a misunderstood genius or a deranged madman? Both cases can be made for Vincent van Gogh, one of the most influential painters in art history. When you read his letters, he sounds like an intelligent and well-spoken man who cares deeply about his passion. His behavior at times, however, reveals the troubled mind that plagued him and which eventually led to his early demise. In this video, I'll explore the story of a painting completed by Paul Gauguin titled The Painter of Sunflowers. This work depicts the talented Dutch painter working on one of his masterpieces. Vincent van Gogh was a man who always lived on the brink of insanity, and I believe that this particular painting might just have pushed him over the edge. In order to fully understand why, I will explore the story from the moment Vincent van Gogh lived together with his brother Theo in Paris. Theo was an art dealer who pretty much funded his brother's career as he traveled from one place to another to paint. Vincent briefly studied art in Antwerp but did manage to pass his class because he had his own ideas about how art should be produced. He moved in with his brother Theo in Montmartre, Paris in March of the year 1886. This appeared to be a good idea because Theo was Vincent's biggest supporter and truly believed in his brother's ability. Unfortunately, Theo soon found out that the mental state of his brother was so bad that living together with this man was simply impossible. Vincent briefly moved to Asnières, a suburb in northern Paris, in early 1887, and it was during this period that Vincent and Theo met Paul Gauguin, another intriguing figure in art history. Gauguin was a successful Parisian stockbroker and businessman who only started painting in his free time in his 20s during the 1870s. He gathered a lot of wealth from his profession but nearly lost it all during a stock market crash in the early 1880s. He decided to move to Copenhagen with his Danish wife Mette in 1884. There he started another business selling French tarpaulins. This wasn't a good idea especially because he didn't speak a word of Danish, so the plan failed horribly. Losing the status of his upper middle class life also resulted in a divorce, and he moved back to Paris in 1885 to pursue a career as a full-time artist. Now here's an important part of the story. He spent the summer of 1886 in the town of pont aven in Bretagne, a place that had become somewhat of an art colony at the time. Unlike in Paris, Gauguin actually became successful here because it was full of young art students who appreciated his revolutionary painting technique. When he met Vincent van Gogh in November of the year 1887, he talked about this idyllic art colony in the utmost western part of France. Not just that, he also told Vincent that his work was admired there and he had a lot of followers. This notion likely instilled in Vincent the idea that he could achieve something similar. Tired of life in Paris, Van Gogh moved to Arles in southern France in February of the year 1888. It's pretty certain that he had the intention to start an art colony here. Motivated by the idea that painters from all over Europe would soon flock to Arles, it became another very prolific period in his career. The bright light of the French countryside and the picturesque little town full of friendly people surely inspired the Dutch painter. Regardless, tragedy was just around the corner. Vincent moved into what is now referred to as the Yellow House on May 1, 1888, and started producing paintings to decorate it. During this period, he completed some of his most famous paintings, including the Night Café, Starry Night Over the Rhone, and Café Terrace at Night. He also completed a series of sunflowers, a subject he already tackled a year earlier while he was still living in Paris. This series features some of his best recognized works. Now here's one of the most interesting elements of the story. Paul Gauguin actually exchanged some paintings with Vincent when they met in Paris a year earlier, and some of these included his sunflower paintings. Vincent continued to correspond with Gauguin as he tried to persuade the French painter to come to Arles. This was mainly because he wanted to see his dream of establishing an art colony come true. He didn't forget about the sunflower painting that Gauguin owned, and that's one of the main reasons why he painted a new series to decorate the guest room of the Yellow House. When Gauguin finally agreed to visit Arles, Vincent's anticipation for his visit turned into anxiety. 
He completed four sunflower paintings in a week and sincerely hoped to impress his colleague. What Vincent didn't realize was that Gauguin didn't feel much about moving to Arles. He only confirmed it when Theo agreed to pay him 150 francs to do so. While Vincent continued to paint almost daily, Gauguin completed just one painting during his more than two months stay. The work that in my opinion made Vincent van Gogh snap. Just a few weeks into the visit, both men started quarreling on a daily basis. Gauguin believed in painting from memory, while Vincent only wanted to paint what he could perceive. The dream of the art colony, which Vincent already dubbed the Studio of the South, was getting further and further away. He soon realized that Gauguin was nothing more than a grumpy, close-minded man who constantly defended his artistic ideals. Then again, Vincent van Gogh was exactly the same, so both characters clashed on a regular basis. This was simply destined to end badly. But there's more to the story. Gauguin started suspecting that Theo might never pay him, and since he already looked down upon the Dutch brothers, he started ignoring Vincent. This was the moment that Gauguin started working on this painting, known as the Painter of Sunflowers. It was about a week before Christmas, a time when it was raining heavily in Arles, and both men were locked inside the yellow house. Gauguin painted Vincent sitting on a chair, half asleep, as he painted one of his sunflowers. The blue wall resembles that of other paintings completed by Van Gogh during this period, such as Bedroom and Arles. In the background we can see a painting by Paul Gauguin titled Blue Trees, which he completed in Paris just before he left for Arles. Now here's the thing, the moment that the dispute between both men reached the boiling point, and while they were forced to stay at the yellow house during heavy rain, Gauguin presented this painting to Van Gogh. Vincent didn't like it. He felt as if Gauguin tried to ridicule him by depicting him as a madman, which was, to be honest, not that far from the truth. I believe that this was the moment that the story took a dark turn, as Vincent spiraled into a psychotic episode just a few days later. The dream was gone, there was no return, and the dark side of Vincent came out as he allegedly attacked Gauguin with a knife. Although this story can be verified, as it was Gauguin himself who told it, we do know exactly what happened later on, and it wasn't pretty. Vincent returned to the yellow house and had a manic episode in which he cut off part of his left ear. He then wrapped his cut off ear into a piece of paper and for some reason delivered it to a local brothel. He had no recollection whatsoever of what happened that night and he found himself in the hospital the day of Christmas Eve, December 24, 1888. When he finally came back to his senses, the first thing he did was ask for Paul Gauguin but the French painter refused to visit Vincent in the hospital. Gauguin soon left Arles and both men never saw each other again. Vincent never fully recovered and painted the aftermath of his manic episode in January 1889. He had several relapses in the following months, despite a lengthy treatment at a mental hospital and the help of Dr. Gachet during the final months of his life. Vincent van Gogh took his own life by shooting himself in the chest with a gun on July 27, 1890. He died on the morning of July 29, less than two days later, from complications of his gunshot wound. The 37-year-old Dutch painter likely shot himself in a wheat field that he painted just a week before this incident took place. What's fascinating about this work is that it features a road that apparently leads to nowhere, and black crows birds commonly associated with death. To conclude, Vincent van Gogh had serious mental problems that went untreated. He was a ticking time bomb that could go off any time, given an unfortunate trigger. He had such high hopes when Paul Gauguin decided to visit him in Arles, but it proved to be nothing more than an immense disappointment and delusion. I believe that Gauguin's work, The Painter of Sunflowers, felt like such a humiliation to Van Gogh that it pushed him over the edge into insanity, and he never recovered from it. His legacy, however, consists of about 860 easily recognizable oil paintings that completely transformed the course of Western art history.